Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman, April 12th, 2024. 30 minutes to go to the cash close here on this Friday afternoon and markets, they just got serious. I'm going to break down all of the trade that we're seeing right now, but more importantly and more pressingly, what you can anticipate is uh, coming out of this marketplace. All right, let's get right to it here, of course, on this Theo Trade weekend update. So, SPOOs, that is S&P futures, right now are down just about 89 handles. Okay, first and foremost, perspective. Look, this is not even a 2% move. So, there's a lot of, if you will, overreaction at this point to some of the price action that we're presently seeing on the screen. I think a lot of people are going to look at this over the weekend and they're like, it's the end of the world. Look, it's not even a 2% move. For those of you that kind of uh, understand markets, maybe a little bit more in depth, uh, until we start hitting levels of like 3% moves on major index products, major index products being, of course, <coughs> the S&Ps, the NASDAQ, right? Until you start seeing 3% moves plus, uh, you ain't home yet. I'm meaning that, Look, it's a little shot across the bow in terms of volatility. Some things are starting to get, though, serious, and that's exactly what I'm going to cover here. But overall, okay, again, perspective, people, and that is 1.7%, just because it's the first time you've seen sell-side activity. Well, look, that's why I use the phrase all of the time that traders become what I term volatility starved animals. And that is very likely what people are seeing right now. So one of the reasons of recording this with 30 minutes to go, you might see a lot more volatility play out in just the next uh, few minutes here. Uh, again, things are tentative to say the least. So getting down to business in terms of the price action, of course, everyone is going to look at this marketplace and recognize that, yeah, <clears throat> geopolitical risk, of course, what's going on in the Middle East, is the cause of the down move. And in my opinion, that could not be further from the truth. The geopolitical risk uh, is the catalyst, but uh, you know, you have to look at the marketplace. And again, I'm going to back you out for uh, last couple of weeks. You know, before there was, you know, heavy geopolitical risk. I mean, come on, there's been geopolitical risk now for the last two years since the war in Ukraine. But before there was heavy geopolitical risk, I am sorry, the marketplace was throwing off huge signs of forthcoming volatility. And this is not like, you know, to agree or not. Look right at the candles in here. CPI comes out earlier this week. Like, do we even have to talk about CPI? CPI sees some sell side activity. The market basically bounces, shrugs it off. <clears throat> Prior to that, though, we were already seeing heavy bouts of volatility. And I think a better way to express this is not just to look at the S&Ps, but to look at the S&Ps in terms of their expected moves, right? Because we had this period of time where moves are rather negligible. All of a sudden, very expansive intraday ranges. And uh, again, volatility, okay, was already here and it was already actually rearing its ugly head uh, prior to some of the geopolitical risk. And I was saying, literally saying earlier this week, while on Theo Trade, the evening video, we're hunting for a catalyst at this point. Okay. And even if we are, even if we are to bounce, you know, right here, let's say we bounced, you know, 30, 40 handles, it ain't over. This is going to be a lot more volatility to come. The geopolitical risk, yes. It is an impending fear to the marketplace, okay? But again, it's just throwing a match into a pool of gasoline that was already there. And that's what this marketplace has been. And again, to elaborate upon that, the expansive range. You know, people talk about market, you know, contracting and then leading to expansion. Here's your expansion right here. I display it a little bit differently, okay? 
And uh, this expansive range over here, I look at it in terms of expected moves. And uh, yeah, that move is real and it's uh, it's hitting right now. Speaking of uh, expansive ranges, one of the things I also want to bring up right up front here in this weekend's update is the SPX. If you're looking at markets right now and you're thinking to yourself, eh, all right, so he makes a good point. You know, we're down uh, a whopping 1.6. Look, where we are okay, in terms of percentage moves is critically important, uh, though even more important where we really are, it's the lower edge of the expected move. I mean, we are literally hanging on, okay, by a thread to the lower edge of the expected move. And this is why I talk about these expected moves, and they're so imperative to understand on a week-to-week -week basis, okay? This is it. It's kind of the last, uh, the last bastion of hope in this marketplace. You know, we start breaking off in the next, again, 25 minutes. You got 25 minutes left to play in the period, plus another 15 minutes of trade afterwards, of course, uh, for the indices. Nevertheless, okay, you want to hold on to this 51.15 in the SPX like it was grim death. I literally said in Wednesday night's video, we would be here and, well, here we are. Okay, we're testing the lower edge of the expected move. It's an absolute critical, critical place. Breaking off the lower edge, at this point in time, uh, would have to be close to 5,100. We actually start getting through 5,100. You are going to see sell side activity into this close like you have not seen in a, what? I don't know, six, eight months since we've seen price action get really downright ugly. So again, I want you to keep in mind, all right, in the next couple of days, next week, the geopolitical risk, okay, was just again, that match, that lit Okay, something in this marketplace, it was already there. It was already there. We were already seeing expansive volatility prior to, I mean, you're going to point to geopolitical risk with a huge breach of the expected move last week. You know, where were you last week? Okay, every single catalyst we're getting over here is absolutely critically important. Okay, next, volatility. So volatility is clearly bid. When we talk about volatility, obviously most people look at the VIX. The VIX, well, even if we were to close right here, right now, all right, this is the highest close that we've seen in considerable period of time. The last time the marketplace uh, had volatility in these levels, you got to come back to, well, late October. And late October is an interesting place to look because what was the marketplace doing in late October? Okay, it was uh, horrendous at this point. I mean, these were really big moves. Of course, you're looking at the spiders does not look real or spectacular, but um, yeah, these were real moves. And of course, uh, the VIX was taking off to the upside. But for me, the careful attention needs to be paid to uh, the volatility of okay, the volatility index. And this thing spiked clear up across uh, 110 today. This is the VIX, volatility, the volatility index, clear up above the 110 level. So what does it indicate? You know, when I'm talking about like, oh, markets just got serious, who cares? Somebody says. What does the VVIX really mean? Uh, it means that VIX options, okay, specifically call options, are just being bid for, right? And uh, what I basically mean by that is like, look at the size in VIX today. Trading uh, VIX is going to do 2.4 million contracts in VIX, okay? In you know this year, this is a record. This year, this is absolutely a record. This is huge, huge volume in here. And what you're actually seeing right now is, uh, for the most part, trade is just rushing out there and they're buying hedges in VIX. And by buying hedges in VIX, okay, you drive up the VVIX. Now, the VVIX, even though it's contracted to some degree, you're like, risk is abating right now. Uh, not exactly uh, correct. What basically you do is a lot of trading firms will go out there and they'll actually buy boatloads of VIX options, okay? And they may actually even offload some of those by later in the day as they use uh, other hedging devices uh, as risk is not necessarily abating over there, okay? But they're wiggling into other hedges throughout the course of the day. So the first knee-jerk reaction is when you know risk is coming, go to the VIX, Okay, and then uh, of course you can arb out of that in other ways throughout the course of the trading session. Now, moving right along, volatility backwardation may also come into play. This is something we have not talked about legit since October, 
of 2023. I mean, it's pretty sad when you got to go back, you know, almost uh, six months to actually talk about real volatility. But um, this is the volatility futures contract. Now, the volatility futures contract that you're presently looking at only has five days left to live. Okay, with five days left to live, eh, not as accurate as you want to go out and start looking at like the 40 day volatility contract. And when I start talking about backwardation, first of all, we're not in volatility backwardation just yet. We're not there yet. But wow, we're getting close. I mean, look, what? Wednesday, sell side activity. Thursday, we rally back up. It's all going to be okay. Here we are on Friday, big sell side activity. I mean, I like to say it's big, but it's not even 2%. Nevertheless, okay, all we have in here is one nice down day, and we're almost in backwardation. What backwardation basically implies, because again, we haven't talked about this in six months, it's when like the May volatility futures exceed June. Now, I want you to think about what volatility is saying, okay? Here's May, okay? And let's say that May has 40 days remaining, right? And then you come out to... June. And June, for example, has 67 days remaining. Now, okay, for argument's sake, when you start thinking about this logically, you say to yourself, okay, what can the market do in 40 days versus what the, can the market do in 67 days? Well, pretty simple. Given 67 days of time, well, there's more time, there's more uncertainty. The June volatility should be considerably higher, considerably higher than, of course, the May. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody, right? More time, more craziness, 67 days. The world can blow up in 67 days more than it can blow up in 40 days. But to give you an idea of what happens when you go into volatility backwardation, that's actually when May vol, okay, explodes over June vol, okay? And you go, well, what does that look like? Well, literally, you could see May trading at 18 in terms of the actual price of volatility, okay, and June all right, trading, for instance, at like, you know, 1780. And that's a very mild backwardation. What that implies is the risk is right now. Risk is imminent. There is more risk in the next 40 days than there is 67 days out. That basically means, okay, that not that the world can explode more out here in June, that the world is exploding right here, right now. And that is how close we are, though, to the backwardation. And I try to give you the best analogy I possibly can for it, because I always think about when we go into backwardation, it's the here, it's the now, it's the world is literally on fire. Okay, we're on fire, we're spiraling out of control. And it's interesting because we're not quite at the backwardation, but we're really, really close. I mean, one little push of volatility into this close, and I don't know if it's got it left in it, it's only, you know, 19 minutes left in the trading day, but one little push of volatility, Okay, and you know, we're home. That would get wild because as soon as we go into backwardation, and this is the important point, you know, understanding that markets got serious, yeah, newsflash, serious out there. Okay, it's, you know, how to implement this moving forward. And when you start thinking about this, the moment that volatility goes into backwardation, it changes how many firms handle their risk. We go into volatility backwardation, <laughs> then they got to use the S&Ps to start hedging off some risk. People are trying to get out of volatility contracts. It becomes uh, Mr. Toad's wild ride at that point. And what happens with volatility is volatility, okay, literally starts to catch fire and creates more volatility. So the contract itself going into backwardation, the way to think about it, the contract itself, okay, is a reaction that actually causes, as soon as it goes into backwardation, causes actually significantly more volatility. And we start to see, okay, the volatility feed on itself. And you get this feedback loop where all of a sudden, boom, everybody starts to buy that May contract and can go parabolic. That could be a dangerous thing. And again, as I said, I don't necessarily think it's coming right here, right now. I'd be surprised to say if it came in the next 18 minutes. However, on Monday, it could be a very different story. You could open in to a volatility backwardation depending upon where the S&Ps are. Remember, <clears throat> markets, okay, geopolitical risk, it's just the catalyst. It's just the catalyst. We're not saying that we're not gonna catalyze anything else over the weekend. All right, Next thing worth looking at over here, you know, I was talking about, you know, volatility in the VVIX, okay, and you're like, oh, well, what other instruments do people go into to hedge risk? Look at the dollar, right? The dollar today, absolutely parabolic. One of the things that bothers me about the dollar, as the dollar 
rallies. It exports inflation. <clears throat> U.S. dollars, I mean, people are using U.S. dollars all over the place, but that dollar gets incredibly strong. It is wildly inflationary at this point. If you take a quick glance here, look back over the last five years, this is one, and this is a weekly chart, okay? So one of the most significant weeks that you're gonna see in recent history to the upside of the dollar. Uh, to me, this is indicative of duck and cover people. Now, at the exact same time, you're seeing the dollar explode higher, obviously, because geopolitical risk, you see oil. But this is exactly the point I want to make, is oil is not nearly as high as you thought it was going to be with all the geopolitical risk, right? Because it's not about the geo risk. Geo risk, again, just lit the fire. But gold is quite scary because gold, it's only down a half a percent with the dollar ripping up seven tenths of a percent. I mean, again, dollar up, typically you get gold down. Here we have dollar exploding higher and gold is barely backing off. Okay, that's something for consideration. Bonds, bonds are actually being bought. That is not a positive for markets at this point. You know, all throughout the course of the week, all throughout the course of the week, we saw heavy sell side activity. In fact, I'm even going back two weeks in here, uh, heavy sell side activity in the bonds. And all of a sudden, everybody turns around and they go, well, why are they buying bonds now? Okay, who is they and why are they buying them? I'll tell you right now why bonds are being bought, stuck in cover. All right, that's trade, okay, historically speaking. When trade has gotten really wild, it was out of S&Ps into the bond market. We are actually starting to see some of that. One thing uh, also worth noting is that uh, bond bond volumes, they really picked up. I mean, today is not nearly as high as I would have thought it would have been, okay? But bond volumes have definitely picked up. We're not exactly at the catastrophe kind of levels, but it's worth noting. The volume is just, you know, substantiating some of the move that you're actually seeing inside of the bond and note marketplace. All right, <clears throat> let's move now to specific sectors. You know, I mentioned financials. There's been a pretty significant correction, and I want to start with them. So some of the financials uh, are experiencing earnings right now, okay? So JP Morgan's out, and obviously JP Morgan is uh, is taking a, a bit of a hit. JP Morgan's down about 6%. Ooh, tried for the corner and missed. It just, you know, look, JP Morgan came out, and their earnings, they actually beat and so forth, yada, 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 okay, but there's going to be some headwinds out there. Nevertheless, the stock gets hit and hits big, right? The one aspect, again, I want to point out, JP Morgan definitely, okay, exaggerated some of today's move in the financials, but people, once again, okay, JP Morgan is not the reason behind the financials. You're not going to, oh, JP Morgan, look, JP Morgan had nothing to do, 40, you know, we're at 42, 22, okay, the last, you know, two weeks, they've been getting tagged. This is actually a really significant move because if you start looking at it on a year-to-date, year-to-date, the financials were up almost 12%. Now they're only up about 6%. Uh, the most current move, and again, kind of a cool way to look at this, from the absolute high over here to present value. Let me actually zoom this in from high to present value. Okay, you're right in the neighborhood of between a 5 and 6% kind of correction and is in a very, very short period of time. So be mindful, the financials, okay? I don't care what time frame of chart you look at. That is not, uh, that one's not lovely. That's not lovely. You know, people always say, look at the larger time frame. Look, I'm not a big market technician, but that's absolutely a standout. If you're looking for one standout in here, like, all right, this, this might get a little bit more serious, okay? Once again, I reiterate, it's not geopolitical risk. There's no geopolitical risk right back here, was there? Okay, was it was it back here as well when we saw a big reactionary high and reversed off it? Absolutely, unequivocally not. The financials are also doing, though, what I would term really big volume. I mean, this is the volume today, okay, is as big as where the low was when we traded 31.36. Okay, these things have been straight up. It is, uh, it's a little bit of a slaughter fest in the last couple of the trading sessions. Going to be worth watching. All right. With that being said, okay, here's a little bit more of a serious note. There's been really minimal damage to tech, like almost nothing at this point. And if there's an area that I'm going to be bothered by, okay, I took a position today inside of the QQQ. I took a bearish position inside of the QQQ earlier today. The NASDAQ 100 has completely flattened out. It's not per se seeing sell side activity. Well, today it is, but it's 1.6%. Again, 
on a perspective basis, when you start looking at the QQQ and you bring up auto expected moves, you realize the financials this week, for the most part, let's call them what they are, massively unchanged. So you go through this and everybody's like, oh, well, the, market's, the market's really selling off, okay? Is it? Because the NASDAQ is actually holding it together right now. I mean, hell, you got Apple, look at Apple's bid to the marketplace the last uh, two trading sessions, huge, huge by huge. In fact, if you look at auto expected moves, I mean, Apple is actually blistering move to the upside over here. Meanwhile, you start looking at stuff like Google, okay, take all this crap off here, hit an all-time high today. Meta, stones throw off all-time high, okay? What, you wanna go over to NVIDIA? Yeah, NVIDIA's seen a little bit of slippage. That huge week though, to bid back to the upside. In fact, you look at NVIDIA, okay, this thing is unchanged in the week. Again, I'm trying to give you guys some perspective because you know Microsoft totally flattened out. If you're sitting here and thinking to yourself, I don't like this ride, I wanna get off. People, the ride hasn't even started yet, okay? We're rolling, we're coasting, we haven't even gone anywhere yet. And I cannot stress that enough is because when you start looking at this marketplace and you're thinking like, oh, it's a 1.5% move. What got serious is volatility. What got serious is the move in the dollar. What got serious is that we're buying bonds right now to mitigate risk. But right now, there's just no damage being inflicted per se to major tech stocks. And I'm going to tell you again and again, till you see tech get absolutely annihilated, this marketplace isn't dead. Okay, this marketplace isn't dead. And if you're looking at this and you're screaming about oversold conditions, I just showed you tech stocks that are literally today, all time high, Google hit an all time high. Okay, to say it's unscathed, Uns what is unscathed? I mean, the thing just shot from 130 to 160 in the last couple of weeks. It's having a reversal. It's not even but 1% in here. Again, completely unscathed is tech. All right, last but definitely not least here on this weekend's update, we always talk about expected move. And the reason is, well, it's what to expect for next week. First of all, the expected move this week, we're home. I mean, we're basically on the lower edge of the expected move. Nothing could be a more effective indication, okay, to the marketplace than that SPX expected move. Now, the expected move for next week, and I wanna be really clear about this, it's not set in stone yet. There's still risk to play out. Look, you got nine minutes left in the trading session. The SPX is open 15 minutes after the close. We right now are uh, handicapping about $100 of anticipation of movement over the seven days, $100 expected move. Now, last week, we had just shy of a $90 expected move. So the week that we just passed through, we're seeing like you know, almost a $90 move today. This was almost $90. And that is from where we started the week to where we presently are trading. Okay. Meanwhile, what are we looking at next week? Next week, you know, there, there isn't a CPI number. All right. There's not a lot of catalysts. Doesn't make a difference. We're coming into next week. Okay. Keep your helmet on over this weekend, people, because you're going into a $100 expected move. It has been a very considerable period of time to have that significant of an expected move. So uh, again, tune in, turn on, strap in for next week because we're going to see some risk. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.